Hello everyone, welcome to Unacademy. In today's short span of video, I am going to cover the full number of mathematics questions which have been asked in gate computer science. So at least the students who are going to appear tomorrow in electrical, electronics and subsequently in different branches, this would have a little bit idea which kind of the questions have been asked and which kind of level you can expect at least from engineering mathematics side. So I can say that there have been the total four number of questions. The first question as you can see over the digital board, this problem has been based on the concept of maxima and minima. Once you are done with that, the next question was a problem based on the triple integration and in the same sequence few number of questions are also been asked this this has been the next question which has been asked from the concept of matrices and the last question has been asked from the concept of probability the questions are not been very difficult but still i can say the problem was above moderate okay so let me take the first question and that comes from the concept of maxima and minima see what the problem is states fx is equal to x cube plus of 15x square minus of 33x minus of 36 be a real valued function obviously which statement is r2 keep in mind it's been a type of msq what does it actually mean of it that means you can have more than one number of answers as well read the uh, read the options carefully and then we will conclude what would be the best most answer the problem states fx does not have a local maxima fx has a local maxima fx does not have a local minima fx has a local minima anyways just try to understand in this way. This has been a cubic polynomial. Agreed, sir. Once you'll differentiate just by knowing its stationary point, it becomes a quadratic equation, quadratic polynomial. And once you'll compare the quadratic polynomial with zero, obviously, we are supposed to have the two number of roots. So one thing has been quite sure if the roots are being pure real, they are being expected to be a one maxima and one minima. So for that, we are going to follow the simple most process. And that is being the first differentiation of the given function. And if you take the first differentiation of the given function, see x cube is just been left out as a 3x square and then comes 30 of x. And the last never the least, it's been minus of 33. Minus of 33. Once we'll be comparing with zero, we will be getting there stationary point. The point at which the slope offered by the given function becomes just zero. So what I'm going to do over here, three has been taken common. The component which has been left out is just been x square plus of 10 of x minus of 11 and had been compared with 0. And we are going to get a quadratic equation out of it. Out of it and this is nothing but x square plus of 10 of x minus of 11 has been compared with 0. And now you can find its root by middle term split or through Sridharacharya rule. But what I feel the middle term split was a better way to get its roots. We had to have the two number whose addition must be 10 and their multiplication must be 11. So what are the numbers have been? So the numbers have been like, 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 like here comes x square plus of 11 of x and then comes minus of x minus of 11 is equal to 0, is equal to 0. So here the x has been taken out. So the factor which has been left out has been x plus 11 and here comes minus x has been taken out. Here again it has been x plus 11 is equal to 0, is equal to 0. So here I can say we had the two real stationary point. So obviously one is been at minus of 11 and the another is been at plus one. Obviously among them one would be maximum and one would be minima. So may I know what would be the best most answer for this given question. Fx does not have any local minima, maxima. Keep in mind if roots must have been imaginary in nature, obviously they would not be valid stationary point at any cost. So in that case, obviously I should have said it does not carry any of the maximum or minima, but as it does carry a value of a stationary point which is being real in nature obviously a has been ruled out c has been ruled out there would be one maximum and one minima if you want you can do the further investigation for that we will take its double derivative as well so we have taken its double derivative my dear friend double derivative should be taken and at the same time we should also have a little bit caution see what it, what it been i should not take any of the minus term outside because if the minus term has been taken outside double derivative instead the plus the minus would come instead the minus the plus would come and end of the day you will be resulting maxima in case of minima and minima in case of maxima so what i can do either i can take the differentiation of this otherwise the three has been taken out no which is even a positive value i can take the differentiation of this term itself so here it becomes two of x plus of ten plus of ten what i am going to do over here just try to understand over here so here i keep x is equals to plus of 1 and obviously the value becomes plus over here so here the minima is going to create it and here the maximum is going to get created when i would keep x is equal to minus of 11 so the curve is going to be like this the curve is going to be like this 
here comes x is equals to minus of 11 and here comes x is equal to plus of 11. Anyways, I don't have to worry about the exact plotting and all. I had to focus over the best most tensors out of the four options which have been supplied along with this problem. The best most tensor is supposed to be A and then comes what? A, 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 FX has a local maximum obviously it is supposed to ND. So whoever have given the answer is B and D that is supposed to be the best most tensor. So in the same sequence I think it's been the right time I could also be taking the next question as well. So here comes the next question. Here, yeah, here, here comes the next question. This problem has been the problem of triple integration. Although in first look, this problem may look scary, but this is not that. How? Once you'll take its lower and upper limit, it has always been moving from minus 1 to 1 to minus 2 to 2, minus 3 to 3, virtually speaking from minus A to A. If end of the day after consolidation, if the function is being found as odd, the value is supposed to be 0. And if it has been found even, you don't have to take the integration from minus 3 to 2, 3. You could have taken just from 0 to 3. And you can just have the multiplication with 2. So, in this process, what you have to do, either you can take any of the sequence, either you can take the reference of x, y, or z. But end of the day, what had been happening, let's take integration has been taken first with respect to the y. In that case, what, are, what is supposed to happen? x is being taken as a constant value. Even the z would be treated as a constant. You will take the integration of y only. Obviously, which will stand y square divided by 2. And in the same sequence, if you will take the integration again and again, end of the day, the result which we are supposed to get, let's say, the x has been integrated at last. And that too from minus 3 to plus 3. And the function which has been led over here, obviously it is supposed to be the function of x only. This is found to be odd in nature. And as the function has been odd in nature, if you will take the integration from minus a to a, the value is supposed to be 0 at any cost. So obviously, may know what had been the best most answer for this given question, sir. 0 is supposed to be the best most answer for this given question. Yes, sir. Agreed at this point. So you have to put the effort, you have to do the integration of this given function with respect to the y, x and z would be taken constant, then y. Anyways, you can take either of the sequence, end of the day, the result is supposed to come for this given question, it's supposed to be 0 only. So whoever have got the answer as 0, that is supposed to be the best most answer. In the same sequence, I think, I should also take the next question. This question had come from the concept of determinant. We had, we had two matrices. Here comes matrix A, which has been 4 in 4 nature, and same goes matrix B. Again, it has been order of 4 cross 4. What the problem states? Let determinant of A and determinant of B denotes the determinants of matrices A and B. Obviously, we had got a 4 cross 4 square matrix. So, obviously, we can have its determinant as well. And dit of A has been taken as a determinant of A. And det of B has been taken as a determinant of B. Respectfully, we reach the situation late and miss that. Oh, sorry. Yes. So, I need to find out among... The data which have been supplied along this problem, which is supposed to be the best most sense. My dear friend, once you focus over the matrix A and B, you know, almost there had been almost similarity. Except if what you will do, if the row 3 is been swapped with row 1, in that case, the matrix B becomes matrix A. Yes or no? Yes, sir. 1, 2, 3, 4 had gone up and similarly then 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2 had come to the same place. So what had been happening? If there had been one swapping in the given matrices, determinant would get multiplied with a minus 1. If n number of that swapping is being taken place, the net impact would be minus 1 raised to the power of n into the older determinant. So obviously only one time the swapping has been done. I can say, yes, this is supposed to be the answer over here. Obviously this can be discarded. So this has been a type of problem where if B is being true, C has to be discarded. C is being true, B has to be discarded. Let, next, determinant of A is equal to 0. Once we'll try to get its determinant, no, exactly I didn't calculate how much it was. But once you'll calculate it, no, you will find the determinant is not being 0. So as far as this MSQ has been concerned, it seems to be MSQ, but only and only one answer has been found to be correct one. So may I know what had been the best most answer? This has been ruled out. Obviously, dit of A, B is no more determinant of A plus B. Yes. So may I know what had been the best most answer? The B is supposed to be the best most answer. Even we had a certain sort trick as well. But I don't think in this video, I would try to show those all sort tricks. Then comes the last question. This has been a problem of probability. Anyways, most of the time, the question which gets asked from the probability, what used to be the nature of them? Usually the different, different events, different, different experiments are being clearly given and you have to find the probability. But in that sense, this question has been a bit different. Let's see what the problem states. Consider a random experiment where two fair coins are tossed. Yes. 
we had a two points which have been fair in nature probability for the occurrence of head and tail have been quite same that has been half and half and both had the same faces head and tail head and tail let a be the event that denotes the head on both the throw okay that's quite okay and similarly be the event that denotes head on first throw and 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 denote heads on second throw which statement is our true again it's been a type of msq so the best thing regarding the mathematics which i had seen in today's section has been mostly they were from the msq segment so even the question quality might be towards the lower side but as it has been msq it becomes a elegant question anyways let me focus on this question now if two coins are being tossed together may i know how many number of events are there in municipal space obviously then they are supposed to be four how zero zero tell tell zero one then goes tell head so four we will be having four number of four number of yes four number of outcome yes let me see which events are been accomplished which are the different let a be the event that denotes a head on both of the throne so yes head in both of the throne so this has been event a this has been event a then 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 on both of the throne b b the event that denotes head on first throne and c denotes head on second throne so b denotes the head in first throw i do not exactly worry in second throw whether it was tell or head but one thing has been quite sure if the first throw has been head by default this has been my favorable condition for accomplishing event b so obviously this has been the event b as well so here comes the last one what the last one states head on first throw and c denotes the head in second throw so what are the different events have been there so here would be c and this would also be c this would also be c agree so let me read the first statement b and c are been the independent event b and c are been the independent event if b and c are been the independent event the probability of occurrence of b and c together has to be equals to probability of the occurrence of event b over c over c yes so let me see b and c where the b and c has been taken taken together obviously this has been the event where b and c has also been participated together out of four number event one event which executes both so it's going to be one upon four if i say what is b of b p of b out of four number of event two events supports p of b so obviously it is going to be two of four and then p of c obviously out of four again two so here it becomes one upon two or one upon two so obviously this has been satisfying my requirement this has been satisfying my requirement in the same sequence if i take the option b what the problem says a and b are been independent what does it actually mean of it that means the occurrence of a does not have any impact over the b and same goes with the b as well necessary and sufficient condition that the event has to be independent in nature definitely there have been several things to be told but the crux is been again this formula has to be followed may you know what it is again p of a intersection b has to be equals to of individual individual multiplication of probability of the occurrence of a as well as probability of the occurrence of b may you know what does it mean by the p of a intersection b the event where the a and b both have been satisfied together may you know where it is been yes this is again been the same thing out of four number of event only one event satisfies this requirement then comes p of a what does it mean by the p of a the p of a is simply going to be 1 upon 4 and p of b is going to be p of b is going to be 2 upon 4 so i can write this as 1 upon 8 as you can see left hand side is not been equals to right hand side b is been discarded now let's take the c what does it actually mean of it p b over c the probability of the occurrence of event b if c is already been occurred is been equals to a probability of b what does it actually mean of it again it is been uh, independent in nature so let me check it out whether it's been happening or not see probability of b probability of b when the c is already been occurred my dear friend probability of b b when the c is already been occurred if c is already been occurred may know what is been the probability of b what is been the probability of b yes yes so there have been the two events where the c is already been occurred out of this two only and only one event where the b is has been taken place so this has been one out of two this has been one out of two and p of b out of 4 2 again it has been true again it has been true so yes d 
A and C are being independent. A and C again the same methodology has to be used. I would take the probability of their intersections. So here comes A intersection C. It will not be P of A and C. Yes. So may I know what have been the best most answer? A and B. A and C are supposed to be the best most answer according to me. If you find any kind of discrepancy, you can put it a comment over uh, YouTube comment box so that at least we'll have a reference of those corrections as well. Here the answer is supposed to be zero. The first question was the question from the triple integration. The second question was the question from calculus. The third was from linear algebra. And the last thing or the least, the probability. Hope you guys have been doing extremely well. So this is all. So this is all. We will meet in the same kind of more videos. Probably the mechanical is supposed to complete after some time. And we will be taking few number of mathematics questions from mechanical as well. Bye-bye. Take care.